Hi, I'm Mrs. Walsh. I'm the fourth and fifth grade science teacher and RTI math teacher here at Berlin Elementary. I'm going to be reading chapter eight in Friendship According to Humphrey. Chapter eight's title, Ill Will. I returned to school with a great sense of accomplishment, but once I remembered where Og had spent the last two days, it was hard to concentrate on geography or math. I couldn't help imagining all the fun Og must have had with the Brisbane's. I glanced over my neighbor at my neighbor in his glass tank. With that horrible grin on his face, he looked like a jack-o'-lantern. Scary. It was very, very, very cold outside, which meant that the heat inside was turned way, way up. Whew. That must be fine for a cold-blooded amphibian, but I was wishing I could take off my fur coat. Then the warm air woke up the crickets who started singing, and there was a squeak, squeak, squeak that was not coming from me, but from Seth as he wiggled in his chair. It sounded like jingle bells, squeak, 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 squeak. squeak. The squeaking made Gail giggle noisily, which made Mrs. Brisbane loudly shush her. I was looking forward to some peace and quiet during recess, knowing I wouldn't want to chat. But when the time came, Mrs. Brisbane announced that the class would stay inside. She brought out all kinds of interesting things to play with. I must admit, I wished I could get out of my cage and play along with the rest of the class. Art and Richie built a tall tower out of tiny bricks, while Kirk and Seth worked on a jigsaw puzzle. AJ and Garth played a game where you slapped down cards. Heidi and Gail played another kind of game moving little plastic men around a board. Mandy, Saya, and Miranda came over to ask Tabitha to play with them. She didn't even look up. She just shook her head. I don't know why we even try to be friends with her, Mandy whispered to the other girls. <sighs> Saya just sighed sadly. I knew how she felt. Og, can you hear me? I squeaked. I have something to ask you. I figured even though I couldn't understand him, maybe he could understand me. See how much fun it is to play with your friends, I asked. It probably sounded like squeak, 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 but he could have at least responded with a boing. I decided to squeak up louder this time. I couldn't even hear myself because of all the yelling. Yelling? I looked around to see who was making all the noise. It wasn't lower your voice, AJ, or repeat it, please, Richie. It was Gail. She had stopped giggling and started shouting. She, the person she was shouting at was her best friend, Heidi. You cheated, I saw it, she said. I didn't, Heidi said. I wouldn't cheat. You must have, you always win. I'm never playing with you again. Cheater, Gail shouted. Mrs. Brisbane quickly moved toward the girls, please. I didn't cheat, insisted Heidi. I'm not a cheater, Gail put her fingers in her ears. Did too, cheater, cheater, cheater. Everyone else in the class stopped playing and stared at the two girls. Mrs. Brisbane was right between them now. Girls, please calm down and be quiet. Heidi and Gail were quiet, but they glared at each other angrily. Tell me what happened, Gail, calmly. Gail wiped away some tears. She was supposed to move her man five spaces, and she moved it six spaces. That gave her a bonus jump, and she won. She cheated. Did not, Heidi shouted. I only went five. Teacher held up both hands. Stop. I want you two to cool off before we talk about it. You're such good friends. Let's work this out. She's not my friend anymore, said Gail. She was crying harder. Thank goodness, Heidi shot back, because I can't stand you, cried Baby. Cheater. 
Mrs. Brisbane shook her head, Heidi, you go over there by Humphrey and Og, she said firmly. Gail, you go sit at my desk, try and settle down. The girls did as they were told. I think they were glad to get away from each other. Soon, Heidi was leaning up against the table where Og and I have our homes. Cry baby, she whispered so softly, only we could hear her. It was hard for me to believe that Heidi would cheat her best friend. It was hard for me to believe that Gail would lie about Heidi. I thought friends always got along, no matter what. First, all she does is giggle. Now all she does is cry, Heidi muttered. At Mrs. Brisbane's desk, Gail glared over at Heidi and wiped away a few more tears. When recess was almost over, Mrs. Brisbane took the two girls out into the hall to discuss the argument. They came back in and quietly returned to their seats. But as soon as Mrs. Brisbane turned her back, I saw them stick their tongues out at each other. Maybe friendship wasn't all it was cracked up to be. It was snowing by afternoon recess, so Mrs. Brisbane divided the class into four teams. Each team had questions to answer. They had, decided, had to decide as a group what the answer would be. Mrs. Brisbane kept score. She wisely put Heidi and Gail on different teams so they couldn't, wouldn't argue or make faces. Both their teams lost. The winning team had Miranda, Kirk, Seth, and Tabitha on it. And to my surprise, the reason they won was Tabitha. Mrs. Brisbane asked each team questions about all kinds of things. Flowers, books, poetry, sports, animals, but not hamsters, I'm sorry to say, and countries. Nobody knew much about flowers. Everybody knew a lot about animals. Saya was the best at answering questions about countries. Would you believe there's a country with a capital called Tegaglapa? I had to write that one down. But Tabitha was the best at answering questions about sports. She knew soccer teams, volleyball rules, and golf champions. The boys all seemed amazed. As the quiz went on, there seemed to be more and more questions about sports. Maybe that was an accident, but when Mrs. Brisbane is involved, things don't usually happen by chance. By the end of the recess period, Tabitha's team had scored 40 points. They would have scored even higher if Kirk hadn't said that the Gettysburg address was the number on the Gettysburg family home. Even I know it was a speech written by a very famous president. He got a laugh and lost two points, but it didn't matter. The next closest team only had 28 points. We won, yelled Seth, the team captain. Way to go! He high-fived Tabitha, Miranda, and Kirk. Three cheers for Tabitha, said Miranda. Hip, hip, hooray, hip, hip, hooray, hip, hip, hooray. I squeaked, jumping up and down for joy. Nobody called her a baby. Even Tabitha looked happy. Unfortunately, Heidi and Gail didn't seem cheered up at all. In fact, while the afternoon, while all the attention was focused on Tabitha, I saw Gail mouth cheater to Heidi. Heidi stuck her tongue out at Gail. It was enough to make a grown hamster cry. A less sensible hamster than me, of course. Ah, you may not understand me, but if you could, you'd want Heidi and Gail to be friends again, right? I asked my neighbor once everyone had gone home for the day. I didn't expect him to understand me. I was just thinking out loud. I was amazed to get an answer. Boing! I jumped straight up and down, up and down, over and over again. I didn't know if he had set on attack or eaten something that didn't agree with him. Ah, oh, are you all right? Boing, boing, he said, boing. I jumped up and looked over at him. I was pretty sure he was agreeing with me. So 
What are we going to do, I asked him. How can we help them? As abruptly as he began, Og stopped bouncing and boinging and sat as still as a rock, as usual. I was discouraged and puzzled, too. Either he didn't have any ideas, or he'd given up on trying to get me to understand him. I felt we both had failed. Finally, I spoke again. They sure were good friends. Og stayed silent for the rest of the night. Hours later, when Aldo arrived, I was still trying to figure out what goggle eyes had been trying to tell me. This was a most peculiar frog. Good evening, gentlemen. Mind if I join the party? said Aldo as he flicked on the lights and rolled his cleaning cart into room 26. Without you, there's no party, I told him. Speaking of parties, Richie is having a big party for his birthday soon. Repeat it, please, Richie. Rinaldi happens to be Aldo's nephew. It's going to be a very big deal. Since I had never been to one, any birthday party sounded special to me. They're having entertainment, like a show or, so or something. Hey, you guys want to see my latest trick? asked Aldo, grabbing his broom. The custodian had already proved his talents to me by balancing his broom on the tip of one finger for a long, long, long time. Once he balanced it on top of his head, this time he threw his head back and balanced the tip of end of, of the broom on his chin for an equally long period of time. When the broom finally wobbled too far, Aldo caught it and took a deep bow. Bravo, Aldo, I squeaked as loudly as I could. Thank you, Humph. He glanced at Og. What's the matter, Froggy? Don't you like tricks? It's not you, I said softly. It's him. Aldo grabbed his lunch and pulled a chair close to my cage. Ah, oh, it's just a silly trick. I'm not good at anything useful. Not true, I argued. Aldo took a sandwich out of his bag and began chewing on it. No, Humph. I've been thinking about it a lot because of this. He pulled a piece of paper out of his pocket. This is the application for City College. If I want to go there, I have to fill it out. So I wrote my name, address, all that. When I got to the part that asked what I want to study, I got stuck, he explained. I'm practically middle-aged and I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Aldo put down his sandwich and stared at the application. I'm not sure what I'm good at. I thought of being a teacher, but I don't know. Would the kids like me? Am I smart enough to be a really good teacher? Yes, be a teacher, please, I insisted. For once, Aldo didn't seem to hear me. Besides, they want a letter of recommendation from somebody important. Somebody who believes I can succeed, said Aldo. I'll do it, I assured him but he wasn't paying any attention. I'm just not sure. He tossed his lunch bag back onto the cart. Don't think I forgot you, pal, he told me as he dropped a small piece of carrot into my cage. Thanks a heap, I squeaked. You're welcome, Aldo replied. At least he understood most of what I said. One thing I understood, it was time for me to take action. Never injure a friend, even in jest. Cicero, a Roman writer and orator. Thank you for reading with me.